a free Kevin. Free Kevin Mitnick. It won't bite you. Speak English? And we're trying to uh, get the message across to Merrimax that it's wrong to release a movie that's supposed to be factual, that are based on real events, that people are, people are going to see this movie and think this is the true story, when so much of it has just been completely fabricated. I've heard about this guy. Really? Here, help stop a movie about a computer hacker. You got a problem? Yeah, I got a problem. Come back and tell me about it. But you know, I mean, it's hard to believe that someone in this country could be in jail for three and a half years, held in a maximum security facility, no bail, no trial. I don't find that very hard to believe. I read a book, Take Down. Take Down, that's right. I read like half of it. Even if you get someone in jail, you probably take over everything. That, that's the problem, is people think that, but it's not true. Well, you don't think you could hack on anything if you just get online? No, we can't hack in anything just by getting online. I mean, you gotta have a program or whatever. Why are you recording this? Hey, read about Kevin Mendick. They're making a movie about this guy. It's the best guy ever. I know him since I was like, hey, you too, yo. I need your love so fast. He's never done anything wrong. He's never hurt anyone. And he's being treated like that in this country. That is the American way. Wake up. Kevin was denied bail. You, you know, even a bail hearing. So, if you recall, even Ted Kaczynski got a bail hearing. His bail was turned down, but he got a bail hearing. You're entitled to bail hearing. You know, on the other hand, Kevin is getting treatment that is outside the law. And that's what makes it very difficult for him to mount a legal defense. He's not being treated in a legal manner. I've never heard of anything even approaching this level of uh, confinement prior to a trial. Murderers get bail. Armed robbers get bail. And so the, the fear of what he's going to do from a push-button telephone in the general population of a cell shows, again, a lack of technical understanding on the part of the prison and judicial system. And I think that's sad. And he is right now the victim of that. On our way up the coast, we dropped in on Sun. According to a letter we got our hands on, they said Kevin's acquisition of their source code represented hundreds of millions of dollars in damage. Now they give the source code away for free. Something wasn't right. So we're right here um, on the other side of the freeway. There's the other Sun, which I believe you guys already saw. And then further up, this is their big campus, which basically all of, uh, all of this blank area is actually Sun buildings and Sun streets. We knew where we were. Now we just needed someone to talk to. Where, what number do we call and who do we speak to? 1-800-USA-FOR-SUN. And they can direct you to whoever you need. USA for Sun? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you, you remember that apartment? or do you want me to write it down? The receptionist wouldn't let us talk to anyone unless we called that number, but we slipped some of our leaflets onto their coffee table. I thought she was being kind of patronizing. Do you want me to write that down or can you remember it? <laughs> I can remember it. Remember it, dear. USA for Sun, right? Is that it, or was yeah, it yeah. Sun for USA? Yeah, USA Fuck. for Sun. You sure? I have it in some of Should I run in and ask her again? Thank you for calling Sun. I have a rotary phone. I'm not going to press any buttons. I'm pressing zero. I'm probably going to get hurt, too. <laughs> My call may be monitored. Oh, it's another machine. <sighs> they want my eight-digit ID number. This is bullshit, man. See, now they've got me waiting for a customer service representative. It's not exactly what I had in mind. <sighs> Let's see what happens. My call is very important to them. He hung up. He hung up on me. I mean, maybe he didn't hang up on me, but he hung up all the same. Fuck. All right. All right, fine. I think on their webpage there was a direct public relations number. Okay, but we're not on their webpage. We're in their parking yeah, lot. That sucks. <laughs> so we can't. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Don't, don't you have, have your, your ricochet? You don't have your ricochet modem? Not today. You're not prepared, man. 
shit. We can't access the web from here. We're outside sun. We can't even get on the damn net to find out their phone number is. You know? All right, I'm going to try this number one more time. I'm going to be a little patient here. Assume maybe they made a little mistake. Okay. Now I am waiting for the corporate switchboard. Uh, hi, Pete. Uh, my name is Emmanuel. I'm trying to reach somebody in public relations, and I'm hoping somebody can uh, can contact me concerning the uh, Kevin Mitnick case and how it involves Sun. We're doing a documentary. Uh, we came to the uh, corporate headquarters hoping to get an appointment, and they gave, it, gave us a phone number, and uh, we're trying to uh, do just that. So if you could get back to me, they have like a fortress here. They have that, that mighty Stonewall. that mighty guard there at the front that won't let anybody by. And then the voicemail guard here that won't let anybody actually call and speak to a person. So maybe they'll call back, maybe they won't. This is the red hotline. If that rings, we'll know. Okay. We have GPS, good. GPS, but no modem. Man, it sucks. It's a trade off. I was using it last night, and it was gone in the morning, which means. Yeah. Right, gentlemen, no cameras in front of the building. Wow, this was a new one. We couldn't even film ourselves in Sun's parking lot. Corporate paranoia was at an all-time high. And, needless to say, Pete never called us back. Meanwhile, John Markoff had agreed to talk to us. Maybe now we'd finally get some answers. We made it to San Francisco on the exact same day that psychologists from all over the world were gathering for a convention. Maybe it was because so many people in the Bay Area were depressed. I mean, they actually have counseling phones on the bridges because so many people are jumping off them. But San Francisco was a friendly town, where people felt safe leaving their trash unattended. But, more importantly, the psychologists wound up taking almost every hotel room in the entire city. Even the old-fashioned ones. We were beginning to get desperate. Then, we found a hotel that was almost completely deserted. We never did find out why. Mark Markov does things like mentions certain stories. He'll just say, you know, it's been said that, or, you know, other people have said that, this. And they'll come up with these stories like he shut down judges, uh, you know, TRW ratings, uh, you know, shut off power. It's bullshit. I don't think John Markov did it because he's he wanted to destroy Kevin, but I think he did it to keep Kevin's evil image. Maybe he believed some of the things himself. He Okay, isn't a newspaper man supposed to investigate something before they pu publish it, before they put it in the newspaper as fact? I know Spencer Tracy and Clark, da Clark Gable always did. We didn't know what we were walking into. Would Markov tell us things about Kevin Mitnick that would shock and horrify us? Or would he realize how much his front page stories and books had demonized Kevin, helping to put him in the lousy place he was still in? This was our one chance to make a difference. And more than anything, we wanted to be fair. And so we came up with the Markov meter. We set a bar on his left and right side and resolved not to judge him badly until he said six bad or inaccurate things. And if he said six good things, well then, the hacker world would just have to deal with it. Maybe this wouldn't be so bad. Now there's an easy point for common courtesy. I wanted to get right to the heart of the matter. Like how they knew it was Kevin they were chasing in the first place. When I called the Qualcomm guys, they had been talking to the FBI, and the FBI believed that it was Kevin who had social engineered them. Why? Right. Um, what, I don't know enough about what's going on and what was going on inside the FBI investigation. Um, I, that's a good question. I, I don't know why. Um, but the FBI told the Qualcomm people that it was Kevin. And to my mind, as a reporter, it fit Kevin's MO. Which is what? Um, social engineering. Really good social engineering. But there are thousands of hackers out there. Social that's engineering. True. For that's sport. true. That, that's true. That's true. I'm not saying it's proof. I'm simply saying the FBI believed it was Kevin. Did and they hear a voice? Or? Did they have a voice recording? Um, did they have a voice recording? That's a good question. What did they have? This we couldn't forgive. I mean, before you go and print front page stories about people eluding the authorities, shouldn't you have some real conclusive evidence? What did Kevin do that was different at one? Well, he had a reputation as being a very good social engineer. And, you know, I mean, I, I've 
heard some tapes, I've heard some people assert this, you know, I, uh, if he in fact, if he in fact was the person who was at Qualcomm, um, then he was a good social engineer. Now that's better. No need to be stingy with the compliments, after all. Now one thing that's been following Kevin Mitnick around since the first story Markov wrote about him is this myth about breaking into NORAD. When you say something like that enough times, people really start to believe it. And in Kevin's case, it really made him into a villain. So where did the NORAD stuff come from? The NORAD stuff uh, is stuff that I got from someone who was in legal trouble with Kevin early on. So I have not been able to interview Kevin face to face. I've heard he said that it's inaccurate, but I haven't been able to ask him. Um, the story did come from a friend of his. Um, I know there are lots of stories, and you know, got to sort through it, man. I think the, the well, what's, what stories have stuck? You know, I mean, with the Christy McNichol thing, people looked into that. That didn't stick. Nor uh, I think didn't stick. Security Pacific, I think, is probably um, one that stuck, but I think probably should stick. You know about that was inside the bank that he, the bank. Uh, he got a job at. That's right, and, and then they, there was letter later a press release sent that suggested the bank was in financial trouble, and then they managed to keep it off the wire, but it almost went onto the wire. But what links that to Kevin? Um, the police investigators that we interviewed believe that it was Kevin. Based on what? Um, based on what? Um, just coincidence of things. Who else would do something like that? You've got to be kidding. You used who else to pin a crime on the guy? On the front page of the New York Times without even using the word allegedly anywhere? This was reported as fact, but it was never backed up. Just like NORAD, just like Christy McNichol, just like everything that made them want to catch Kevin so badly. Okay, let's look at the issue of solitary confinement. It was never mentioned in the front page article that Kevin had been locked in solitary for eight months and was desperate not to go back, and that this, above all, was what made him run. Yeah, I mean, he didn't want to go back to jail. And it's, uh, not just jail, solitary confinement. Was he months. in solitary before? This was his first time in solitary. 1989. He spent eight months in solitary in 1989. I didn't realize. Wait a minute, he didn't spend eight months in prison, and he was only in prison for six months in 89. You've written two books on the guy, as well as countless articles. You're seen as somewhat of an expert on Kevin Mitnick, and you didn't know he was in solitary confinement? Or even how long his sentence was? For the record, Mitnick spent a year in prison in 1988, eight months of which was in solitary confinement, plus another six months in the halfway house. It's a good thing those psychologists were in town, so we could confirm that locking someone like Kevin in solitary was a pretty fucked up thing to do. I think it's inhumane, and I think that there are better ways to handle our problems. This is not, I mean, obviously, if this person has been able to do some of the things, apparently, that they think he was doing with the computer, he's very bright. That's a real talent that's being wasted. And to lock him up, especially in solitary confinement for eight months, that's, we wouldn't treat an animal that way. You know, and yet this is a talented individual. Excuse me. It's not right. Thank you. Thanks very much. He was in solitary the entire time he was at, at Lump Hall. A large amount of time. Really, really eight months. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty hard. Okay, Markov gains a point for that show of humanity. Now, here's something interesting. When Kevin was on the run, he communicated with an Israeli hacker known as JSZ, who was believed to be the mastermind behind all the hacking that Kevin was blamed for. Yet, Markov never wrote a story about this person, and didn't even follow through when JSZ moved to New York. In fact, none of the authorities seemed to care either, almost as if these crimes were really trivial. Now that would be a great story, wouldn't it, John? I thought a lot about that, but I'm, you know, I just haven't had the time to, to do the reporting. I mean, I've got, I've got a day-to-day -day beat out here, and uh, you're, you know, you're right, it's probably a great story. I would love to talk to JSZ, and maybe I should come to New York. And... But that was a story that was going on back then. JSZ right. was... was... Supposedly the mastermind behind everything, and, and the conversation. Well, I never knew what the relations were. The only thing I knew about, the only thing I could say that I knew was that um, JSC and, and Kevin were actively trading information on software. That's that's what I knew. I knew nothing about masterminding. I mean, you know, my if I if you asked me to reconstruct just from what I knew, it was um, JSC provided the tools and Kevin made the attack. But I have no idea if that's true. No idea? 